Traveling with surfboards absolutely sucks. Over the years, I've spent thousands of dollars transporting my surfboards around the world. So to save you guys some of the pain and the cost that I've gone through, I wanted to create this resource as a go-to guide for anybody traveling with surfboards. So before we jump into all of the different airlines, let's get a few things straight. Now, I've never come across an airline that doesn't accept surfboards. I'm sure there are some out there, but most airlines accept surfboards, whether it be for an extra fee or included in your checked baggage. The maximum length you can have is up to three meters, and usually 23 kilograms is the standard for any checked baggage. It doesn't matter whether this is included or you've paid extra for it. Usually you can pay up to 32 kilos or 40 kilos in some cases. Anything heavier than that usually has to be shipped as cargo. Whenever you go over this weight, airline charge your per kilo overweight fee obviously you don't want to be doing this so you always want to make sure you weigh your stuff beforehand as you'd expect you always need to carry your boards in some sort of board bag I don't know who's transporting boards without that that's just kind of stupid but yeah you always want to get yourself a good board bag with good padding good compartments so you can put other stuff in there for airlines that give you the option to book sports equipment or extra luggage on it's always, always cheaper to do this before you go to the airport. So although it's pretty annoying when you're booking your flight online, paying that extra bit there and then is a lot cheaper than doing it at the airport. I've been stung like this so many times because I, I book a flight quickly or I've only just had enough money for the flight and then I always end up paying more at <laughs> the airport. So that's something you want to avoid. While the exact dimensions, weight limits, what is and isn't allowed will differ kind of depending on your origin, your destination and the airline. These kind of rules are pretty universal, but that said, I'd always recommend just checking with your airline um, beforehand. So without further ado, let's start breaking down the airlines. First up, we've got the good category. So these are the most surfer friendly airlines out there. We're talking free surfboards as part of checked baggage, good quality experience, and generally speaking, problem free surfboard transportation. So first up, we've got American Airlines. Now, American Airlines recently stepped up their game for surfers after ditching its $150 sports equipment fee. Surfboards now come as part of your checked baggage allowance. So standard checked baggage fees do apply, so you're still gonna have to pay for more baggage if you want more weight. So you need to double check how much baggage you're allowed when you book your ticket. Next up, we've got Air New Zealand. New Zealand's national airline is a great choice for surfers, which is just as well because they have frequent routes between top surf destinations, Australia, New Zealand, South Pacific, Indonesia. Sporting equipment, including surfboards, is free as part of your checked baggage. It has to be less than two meters and under 23 kilograms. Like all airlines, extra fees do apply if you go overweight. If you know you're over, just make sure you book this beforehand. Their website also states that bags are counted as bags, not pieces, which is always reassuring when you book. I've never actually alone with Air New Zealand, but from everything I've read online, they're a pretty solid airline for surfers. Next up, we've got Air Asia. Although Air Asia is what you might consider a budget airline, usually budget airlines sting you for surfboards. Air Asia actually has a complimentary surfboard policy, which is pretty cool. Not many airlines have that. However, this only applies to flights to and from Australia. Their official website wording states that one surfboard is allowed up to 15 kilograms. I don't know if they open board bags and check how many boards you've got please let me know in the comments if you've flown with air asia and if they they do check this the flights elsewhere in asia as in not to and from australia you'll need to book on sports equipment for an extra charge so british airways is one of the best most surfer friendly airlines out there their website states that for all sporting equipment if it fits inside your checked baggage allowance it's free bags must be under 190 centimeters in length obviously in a protective bag and the site does actually say that clothes and other items must not be in the board bag with your surfboards. I mean, I don't know if they check this. This is something I always do for extra padding. With an airline like British Airways, I can't imagine this is something that they check. I should also mention that bigger sporting equipment, so long boards, paddle boards, might need to be checked in as cargo. So this is something you need to check on the website. Also, if you're watching this from the UK, now something I've been using recently is an American Express credit card. Now I have an Amex British Airways card, 
which basically means every time I spend on that card, I earn Avios, which are British Airways point system. So every time I, cap I tap that card, I build up points and I can use them towards free flights. So I haven't managed to build up enough points for flights yet, but by the end of the year, I'll be well on my way to a free flight. If you're watching this from the UK, this credit card is available to you. You also get some bonus points when you sign up if you spend over a certain amount. Obviously, I'm not a fan financial advisor. You know, I'm just giving surf information. So, you know, using credit cards is completely at your own risk. You know, if you're spending that money anyway, it's a good way to build up some points and eventually score a free flight. Next up, we've got Etihad Airways. As is the theme with many top Middle Eastern airlines, flying with Etihad with surfboards is a dream. Really good airline, surfboards come free as part of your checked baggage. However, boards must be no longer than 300 centimeters. And like all airlines, they don't technically accept responsibility for your surfboards. While tickets with Etihad are usually a lot more expensive than with some other airlines, they're a great choice for surfers and it can actually work out a fair bit cheaper. So they're a solid airline with, for the most part, stress-free surfboard travel. Next up, we've got Emirates. Now, Emirates is my favorite airline in the world, and I try and fly with them whenever I can. You get treated well, the service is excellent, surfboards are free as part of checked baggage, and I've flown with them probably 10 times throughout my life, and I've never had any trouble with surfboards. They've just checked them in straight away, so it's always a pleasurable experience and an airline that, as a surfer, I couldn't recommend highly enough. So Garuda is by far the best airline in Indonesia. Surfboards come free as part of your checked baggage. So while Garuda tickets are much more expensive than some of Asia's budget airlines, the experience is just that much more pleasurable and best of all, surfboards are free as part of checked baggage. Garuda makes this super clear on their website, so you know when you see that on the website, there's no confusion and you just know you're booking with an airline that will take care of your boards. For economy tickets, you'll get 30 kilograms of free checked baggage allowance, which is, yeah, eight kilograms higher than most other airlines. So definitely a good airline to check out if you're flying throughout Indonesia. So I've flown with KLM a few times, never had any issues. I've flown with them between the UK and Central America, found them to be a pretty good airline and you can bring surfboards on KLM instead of your checked luggage. If your surfboards are over 107 centimeters, their website does state that you will need to make a reservation. Again, I've never had to do this. So this is something you're gonna have to check depending on what size board you're bringing. But again, a great airline with routes all over the world. Next up, we've got Omani Air. So while this is one of the lesser known surfing airlines from their website, it seems like they're pretty good for surfers. Surfboards are considered special baggage and come as part of your checked luggage. So if you're ever looking at flights and you come across Omani Air, maybe they've got tickets to Sri Lanka, Oman, or other places in the Middle East, it's a pretty good one to check out. Surfboards must adhere to standard baggage size and must be carried in a rigid case, their words. But yeah, I've never flown with Omani Airways, so if you have, please let me know what the experience was like down in the comments. Next up, we've got Malaysia. Now, Malaysia is probably one of the most unlucky airlines on earth. Planes going missing and planes getting shot down didn't do much for their reputation. However, since then I've flown with Malaysia a few times. The experience is always pretty good. Surfboards are free as part of your checked baggage. So if you're flying between Europe and Asia or, or anywhere really, Malaysia are definitely a good choice to check out. One thing I will say about Malaysia is that you do need to check what is and isn't allowed depending on your location. I've only flown with them between the UK and Indonesia. So for other routes, I think particularly out of North America, there are charges associated with sporting equipment. Like with all of these airlines, you do have to do your own research just to be safe. Next up, we've got Qantas. With all Qantas flights, surfboards come free as part of checked baggage. I've flown with Qantas between Indonesia, Australia, New Zealand a few times, and I've never had to pay with surfboards. Officially, surfboards are only accepted if the board bag does not exceed 32 kilograms and 277 centimeters in weight. I mean, again, I don't know how strict they are. 32 kilos is pretty heavy. I travel with like three boards, a couple of wetsuits and a few clothes and bits and bobs stuffed into the board bag. 
and generally my board bag weighs between 20 and 25 kilograms. My boards are also all 5.9 and fairly lightweight as well so if that gives you some idea of what that weight equates to hopefully that that helps you. Qatar Airways is a wicked one for surfers. I've flown with Qatar a handful of times and never had any issues. Surfboards come free as checked baggage however rules and, and prices do change depending on location so head to the website just to double check that surfboards as free baggage counts to in your fare. So I've never flown with Royal Brunei from what I hear though they're a pretty good airline surfboards come free as part of your checked baggage and it can be a super handy airline traveling between well anywhere in Asia and to Australia so if you've flown with Royal Brunei please let me know what they were like down in the comments so another top quality airline is Singapore Airways. Singapore has routes all over, most notably between Europe, the Middle East and to Asia. So surfboards are accepted as checked baggage but they cannot exceed 200 centimeters in length, 75 centimeters in width and 80 centimeters in height. Although these measurements are pretty standard. So if you're visiting one of the best intermediate surf destinations on earth in Sri Lanka, then the national airline is a great option surfboards come free as part of your checked baggage you know if it's your first surf trip heading somewhere like Sri Lanka choosing Sri Lankan Airways is pretty good they just make the experience pretty easy surfboard equipment is included in checked baggage so a great choice if you're heading to Sri Lanka so for South African Airlines surfboards are included as checked baggage I've not spent enough time in South Africa to have flown with South African Airways so again please let me know if you have down in the comments but from everything that I can see online and from their website surfboards just come free as checked baggage. So if you're traveling between wave rich regions such as Hawaii, Tahiti, all those Polynesian islands you'd expect that all airlines kind of transport boards for free however this is not the case and Tahiti Nui is one of the only airlines that do. So if you're flying throughout this region, Air Tahiti Nui is by far the best airline to choose. Sports equipment is included in your checked baggage. The website also says that one or more boards can be within that board bag. So again, really surfer friendly airline and a great choice if you're flying throughout Polynesia. So for Virgin Australia, sports equipment can be checked in as oversized baggage as part of your free baggage allowance. Because Virgin runs and operates flights all over the world, it comes under different sectors of Virgin. So this is something that you've got to check and whether you're, it's Virgin International, Virgin Australia, the rules will differ slightly. So for this one, I found the information to be a little bit confusing. So the best thing I can recommend for Virgin is just to call them up for your flight or before you make the booking. So these following airlines, you can fly with them, but they charge you for boards. You know, this can range anywhere from $20, $50, $100, which is okay, it's just about tolerable. So if you really have to, these are some okay airlines, but just be prepared to pay for your boards. First up, we've got Alaska Airlines. Now, Alaska are probably one of the best in this bad category of surfboard friendly airlines. It's $30 for checked baggage, but your sports equipment, so your surfboard is included as part of that. So while technically it's not three, you know, $30 isn't too bad. You know, I'm, I'm fairly happy to pay $30 for surfboards. So for routes to surf destinations across North America, Alaskan Airways can be a pretty good one to choose. Next up, we've got Avianca. They have pretty cheap fares some of the time. I've actually flown with Avianca from LA to San Salvador for 35 US dollars once, which was pretty crazy. Granted, I did have to pay a lot more for surfboards. With Avianca, you have to pay a sporting equipment fee. For international flights, this costs around $100 if you book online beforehand. However, if you do it at the airport, it will set you back $120. It's also worth noting that because they're an Ecuadorian airline, if you're flying within Ecuador, this fee is only $25. So next up, we head back to Europe with EasyJet. So EasyJet are one of the better European budget airlines. Europe is epic. You know, you've got so many cheap flights between wicked surf destinations, between the UK, Ireland, France, Portugal, Spain. You can find flights between these places for like $30, $40 in some cases. So EasyJet accepts surfboards, but they must fit within your allocated weight, which, you know, if you book the basic 
one is 23 kilograms. I've flown with EasyJet more times than I care to admit, but usually this involves paying for something they call small sports equipment. With EasyJet, you've always got to make sure you're underweight, otherwise they sting you with 12 pounds, so around 15 US dollars per kilo. So, you know, if you're a few kilos over, that can add up really quickly. So just make sure you're, you're underweight beforehand. One thing that you can do to make sure you've got this, I mean, I don't do this, so, <laughs> but I'm definitely gonna get one, is one of the, these little handle weights. So you can hold it in your hand, it's got a little hook, put it under your board bag, lift it up, tells you the weight of the board bag, and then you know, you, you know you're kind of in the know before you go to the airport. I'll leave a link in the description where you can check one of those out. You can just get them on Amazon for a few bucks. So EasyJet is okay. It's, I like to think of it as one of the better budget airlines in Europe. And to be fair, like paying $40, $50 for your boards is, is pretty tolerable. Next up, we've got Jetstar. Now Jetstar is one of the biggest budget airlines in Australia. So if you're flying within Australia, hopping over to New Zealand, going to Indonesia, Jetstar is a great choice with affordable flights. However, like with EasyJet, you've got to be pretty careful with your weight limit. Jetstar charge a flat $25 handling fee for surfboards and sporting equipment. You then also have to purchase your baggage on top of this. So that's the thing, although Jetstar has pretty cheap flights to these places and it's really tempting to book, you book the flight, whack on that handling fee and pay for your baggage and you've got that both ways and suddenly you've paid more for that flight than you have if you just booked one with Qantas or Virgin. So that's something to bear in mind. I've flown with Jetstar quite a few times but I recently had a pretty shit experience with them. I was pretty far over my weight limit to be honest but just because I was so far over, they checked my hand luggage as well and were just being so anal that I basically chose to throw some of my stuff away rather than pay the extra. And it caused like a massive scene in the airport and stuff and the lady was really rude to me. So I'll never fly with Jetstar again. But yeah, if you're, if you're flying within Australia and in this part of the world, it can be a good option. Next up, we've got LATAM. Now, Latin American Airways, I've flown with them quite a few times. They're an okay airline, but like a lot of the South American airlines, you, you have to pay for boards. LATAM is a little bit complicated for exactly what they charge you because it changes depending on the origin and the destination. But generally speaking, it's around $50 for domestic flights and $100 on international. However, this can change, so I just recommend double checking when you book depending on your exact route. Other than that, they're an okay airline, but yeah, not the cheapest when, if you're doing a return trip and you're paying $100 both ways, you're paying $200 more than, than your ticket, it's, it's pretty gnarly. Now, Lion Air, a, a pretty prominent budget airline throughout Indonesia. They've got cheap flights between Bali, Lombok, Sumbawa. So if you spent a bit of time in Indo, they're an airline you will have come across. So they charge per board, but they don't always check. So you can sometimes get away with, you know, just getting charged for the bag if you say you've only got one board, but they always ask. And if you've got three or four boards and they do check, they'll sting you. Now, you're in Indonesia, so they only charge around 200,000 Indonesian rupiah per board. But if you've got three or four boards and doing that both ways, it's still pretty expensive and it does add up. So although it's not as extortionate as some of the other airlines, it's just annoying to have the faff. And then when they open and count them, you've lied and, <laughs> and you get stung. I actually got caught doing this in Sumbawa and yeah, it was just so embarrassing. I felt like I was just a little school kid getting told off. <laughs> so another European budget airline is Ryanair. Now Ryanair offer ridiculously cheap flights within Europe. You know, you can literally get flights to different countries for less than $10. It's insane some of the fares they run. I don't know how they actually make that financially viable, but I, I guess they sting you for your baggage. Yeah, I actually flew from uh, the UK to Fuerteventura in the Canary Islands for $30 once, which was pretty insane. But yeah, you can take surfboards on all Ryanair flights. You just have to pay for them. Generally, boards cost around 55 euros. So make sure you do this online when you book rather than waiting until you get to the airport because then it goes up to like $80. So it gets pretty expensive if you do that twice you know, all of a sudden that's how, <laughs> that's how they get you. Using Ryanair can sometimes be one of those rare occasions where booking that cheap 
airline, even with surfboards, can actually still be affordable. You know, if you booked a ticket for $20 and then paid $50 for your boards, you've still paid less than $100 to get to a different country, which is, is pretty cool. So Ryanair, although they're not the best airline, it can be a good one to choose. So next up, we've got Scoot. So while you need to book your baggage on as extra, it doesn't come free. You don't just get free baggage with your standard economy ticket. Sporting equipment is included in this. So you do book your baggage and you can have sporting equipment within it. So you don't have to book the baggage and the sporting equipment or pay like an extra handling fee. So although it's a pretty cheap like budget airline, it's not too bad for surfers and you can purchase up to 40 kilograms of luggage before you book. Their website states that sporting equipment such as bicycles, golf clubs, surfboards, all that kind of stuff is included in checked baggage. So a semi-decent option. Next up, we've got TAP Portugal. Now I've flown with TAP a couple of times. They're a popular Portuguese airline with flights all over Europe. If you wanna go and surf some sick waves in Portugal, there can be a good choice. They're fares are pretty affordable but they do charge for surfboards while the exact price you pay for your boards on tap will depend on where you're going and where you're coming from booking your surfboards online beforehand costs around 77 us dollars or you pay 83 dollars at the airport so the wording on their website says you must also fill a form out to declare your surfboards however when i've flown with tap i've never actually had to do this so again if you fly with them more often please let me know in the comments not great but tolerable, you know, you can deal with a $70 sting. So I just want to interrupt this video to let you know of something called Priority Pass. If you travel a few times per year, whether it be for your surf trip or for work, Priority Pass membership can give you access to lounges all over the world. The prices start around $300 US per year. So if you fly 10 times within a year, works out as around $30 per airport visit. To be honest, you probably spend that anyway each time you go to the airport. Once you've bought a $6 coffee, $20 meal, magazine or book, it all adds up pretty quickly. So by having access to these lounges, although you paid this fee and it seems expensive, you get really good Wi-Fi, you get complimentary food in most of them, they have showers and you can just kind of relax and enjoy that airport time. It's only really worth it that if you do fly a lot, otherwise you can just pay per lounge visit, which, you know, if you're only flying a couple of times per year, I'd probably recommend doing that instead. You know, if you're sort of a more budget surf traveler like me, you kind of overlook lounges because you just think they're like reserved for rich like business class passengers, but they're actually not crazy expensive and they just make your airport experience that much more enjoyable. So we've reached the point in the video where we're gonna dive into the ugly category. So these are just the worst airlines for surf travel. These are the airlines that will bend you over, sting you hundreds of dollars, and even charge you for individual boards. I've flown with a couple of these airlines. I'm, I'm being stung pretty bad, but definitely not as bad as, as some people probably have. In this video, I really wanna know your best as in worst surf travel baggage story. So if you've been stung hundreds of dollars for boards, if an airline has broken your boards, I wanna hear your story. I mean, I've been through my fair share of bad experiences, but I wanna hear yours. So if you've got a good one, please let me know in the comments. We can have a laugh at your expense and it can help others not have to pay that same fee. So yeah, please let me know down below. So these airlines, they either charge extortionate fees just for baggage in general, or they count individual boards, or in some cases, even both. So add all of these airlines to your blacklist and just try and avoid them at all costs. So first up, we've got Cafe Pacific. Now Cafe Pacific suck for surfers. They charge extortionate fees for surfboards. You're talking hundred, plus dollars. Couldn't find exactly how much they charge. From what I've read online, they charge pretty extortionate fees for surfboards. I mean, their website wording kind of says it all with the words, one water surfing board, whatever that is. <laughs> so that just shows how much they cater for surfers. And they run a per piece system. So whatever the baggage charge is, they're charging it per board, not per bag. So. Definitely, they are a pretty good airline, but for surfers, they suck, so definitely one to, to avoid. So China Air, now, whilst I was researching for this video, this is one of the hardest airlines to find their exact policy and charges. I still couldn't tell you exactly how much they charge, but the process seemed to be so confusing that you have to ring ahead if you want to take surfboards. And from what I can make out, basically, if you want to take boards, they charge per board, and it 
basically adds up to hundreds of dollars. I've never flown with China Airlines. If you have, please let me know what they're actually like in the comments. But from what I can make out, surfboards as excess baggage cost $200. But yeah, that website was really confusing. I, I just couldn't make sense of it. So another Latin American airline, we've got Copper Airlines. I've flown with Copper between Mexico, Panama and Ecuador. And for all their flights, there is a flat fee of $150 for surfboards which is pretty heavy to be honest. And their website does say that you must reserve surfboards via the phone. However, the few times that I've flown with them, I've, I've never done this and not had any problem. They've always been pretty happy to slap me with that $150 charge. So yeah, this is one, I mean, if you have to fly with them, it's okay. But if you can avoid it, try your best to avoid it. Next up, we've got Fiji Airways. Now Fiji Airways, they're a pretty good airline, but for surfers, they're just annoyingly bad. I mean, they charge $150 for surfboards each way. Stung with this, flying from LA to Melbourne via Fiji last year, I had to pay $150 each way. 300 US dollars just for surfboards is pretty insane. Their website states that surfboards are included in check baggage, but there's a bulky items fee involved as well. Now, Fiji Air is pretty confusing because it depends on, on your origin and destination. So check the fees for your destination via the link in the description. Hawaiian Airlines. Now, Hawaiian Airlines are by far one of the worst for surfers. So many people over the years have slammed Hawaiian Airlines for how they treat surfers and surfboards. They just charge ridiculous money for boards. For flights between the Hawaiian Islands, boards will cost you $25 each way. Flights to North America cost you $100 each way. And for longer international flights, it's $150 each way. Now, pretty extortionate, you know, just getting to California and back from Hawaii cost you $200, which is insane. I don't know if Hawaiian Airlines do this to take advantage of so many traveling surfers. You know, obviously it's the most famous surf destination in the world, so do they do that just to take advantage of it? Because they know people who have to travel with boards. But yeah, Hawaiian Airlines suck, and they've been slammed by many like traveling pro surfers over the years, so this is definitely one to avoid. I I've never flown with Hawaiian and probably never will, uh, but for now, let's start a movement of hashtag boycott Hawaiian Airlines. <laughs> Next up, we've got Japan Airlines. Now, although I love the Japanese hospitality in general, for surfboards, this airline absolutely sucks. Flying between Japan, Russia, Guam, and Oceania, boards will cost you $100 each way. To the Middle East, Europe, the Americas, it will cost you $200. Just absurd fees, really. So definitely an airline to avoid. And the website also states that only two surfboards are allowed per bag. I mean, I don't know if they check this, but just try and avoid Japan Airlines at all costs. So Lufthansa are a German airline. They've got routes all over the world. I've never flown with them, but based off their policy wording on their website, they charge a lot of money for surfboards. So yeah, they're pretty terrible for surfers and it's definitely an airline I'd try and avoid. Their website does state that you can take surfboards with you. However, from other sources on the web that for European routes, it costs around $92 to take boards. Middle Eastern, African and Asian routes, it costs $115. And for long international routes, this is upwards of, of $150, $200 plus. So, Based on what I've read online, Lufthansa are definitely an airline to avoid. Now, I've never flown with Royal Air Maroc, but from everything I can see online, <laughs> they're not the best for surfers. Please let me know if you've experienced flying with them down in the comments. Flying even just from Europe to Morocco will cost you 70 euros for a 23 kilogram board bag. For more weight, it's gonna cost you 120. And then for that same flight, for that same weight, if you wanna fly from Morocco to Africa or the Middle East, it's gonna cost you $180. It's just crazy expensive. So definitely an airline to avoid. So I've never flown with Thai Airways personally, but again, they charge a lot of money for surfboards. So from what I can decipher from their confusing website is it's basically $150 plus anytime you wanna take surfboards. If you've flown with them and you can confirm this, please let me know. But otherwise, again, another one that's pretty ugly for surfers and one that I'd, yeah, step away from. So next up, we've got Volaris. Now Volaris are another South American airline. You can take boards, but you need to pay a fee for your sports equipment. This is called the more baggage combo, and this is something I'd recommend booking with Volaris. It costs $160, so, it's not great, <laughs> but if you can find, they sometimes have pretty cheap fares. So if you can find a cheap fare and then pay $106, it's still not great, but it 
if you have to, it's there. But again, it's quite confusing because this depends on the location and the origin and destination. So definitely check beforehand. So Wizz Air is without doubt one of the worst airlines I've ever flown with. Terrible, terrible experience. While it doesn't cost crazy money to actually take surfboards, I just had such a bad experience with them that basically they're a really cheap European budget airline. You've got to pay for your baggage and your surfboards, as you can see here in the example. I had just the worst experience with them ever, so I'll never fly with them again. So they canceled my original flight, which meant I missed the connecting flight, but they weren't liable for that somehow. So I had to fork out on two new flights pay $90 in surfboard baggage fees for each one. And then I hadn't booked a return yet, so I had to book that as well, um, all in one go. So they canceled one of their flights. I had to pay all of that money, <laughs> which is ridiculous. And they charged on surfboards on top of that. And to make things worse, on the way back, so I was flying from Tel Aviv back to London, they lost all of my luggage and I couldn't call anyone from the airline. There was no one to represent the airline who I could contact. Yeah, I just didn't think I was gonna get my boards back. I actually went on another trip, managed to get some stuff together because I had all my clothes in that board bag that was lost. Went on this other trip and then I happened to be flying back to London through the same airport and I saw my board bag in a huge pile of just lost luggage. A massive pile, probably like 200 bags my boards were just resting on top. I just went up to the guy and was like, mate, these are my boards. I've been trying to contact you guys for all, every day for a week. It was just like, oh yeah, just grab them. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's the kind of service you get with Wizz Air. So definitely one to avoid. <laughs> so that concludes our surfboard friendly or surfboard not so friendly guide for 2023. I hope you found it super helpful. Please note that this is only intended as a guide. Please do your own research whenever you book a flight. You know, I don't want to be responsible for the fees that you get slapped with. Obviously rules change depending on origin and destination and they can also get updated. Can't stress enough how important it is to just check the policies when you book. Whenever you're booking a flight on kayak or Skyscanner, load up the flight check the airline and before you book, just go onto their, that airline's website, read through the policy and just you know, go to the airport in the know of how much you're gonna have to pay because then you can budget for it if they charge a fee or you can just book an airline that's slightly better and doesn't charge. So I've never really learned in almost a decade of surf travel to not book the cheapest flight and to actually book slightly more expensive flights but with better airlines where you get better service and include surfboards for free. So although it's tempting to book that super cheap flight when you load up kayak, it's often a lot better just to book with a better airline. So I wanna make this the best surfboard airline guide on the web. I've attached the blog post version of this video down in the description, which I'll try and update as regularly as possible. As well, I wanna hear your worst surfboard baggage stories and also any airlines that I haven't included on this list that might be lesser known, but that you've flown with on surf trips, I wanna hear all of it. So let's just try and help each other as much as possible, not have to pay extortionate surfboard fees from now on. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe and share it to as many people as possible. But for now, it's goodbye from me and I'll see you in the next episode.